next weekend. Now, starting on Monday, we're going to be talking about those rain chances, which are going to be pretty significant. We could see quite a bit of rain thanks to this tropical system. And of course, we're going to have a drought update later today. I'll have the details on the drought with the new monitor. But of course, we'll talk, talk about that all morning and I'm going to have your weekend forecast coming up. Got it, Jessica. Thank you. And heavy rain caused the parts of Broward and Miami-Dade counties to flood. Parts of I-95 were closed due to this as both counties saw five to about seven inches of rain. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has declared a state of emergency for South Florida. Now, the city of Sarasota, which is uh, three hours from Miami, received at least three inches of rain in just one hour. The rain forced ground stops at three airports, causing delays for at least seven hours. And in Dania Beach, at least 40 rescues. In Martin County, a possible tornado brought down trees and power lines as well. We are not aware of injuries. We're still going through the neighborhoods, checking fire rescue is here. We have our contract workers for the county cutting uh, the trees off the roadway, but this is impassable. Damage to determine if a tornado did touch down. And we're monitoring grid conditions this morning for ERCOT. Right now, conditions are normal and there's enough power for the current demand. The update comes as state lawmakers continue to analyze demand on the grid and future supply opportunities. Uh, also, we're looking into the implementation of newly passed laws to improve the grid. And we've long known the most vulnerable time for ERCOT's power grid. It's hot late summer nights as the sun goes down. I mean, that's when the big chunk of energy generated. We've long known the most vulnerable time for ERCOT's power grid is on hot late summer nights as the sun goes down. That's when the big chunk of energy generated by solar power goes offline. And it gets worse if the wind goes down as well. According to this report delivered to lawmakers this week, this August, each night around 9 p.m., there is more than a 16 percent chance the grid will have to take emergency measures, like asking people to use less energy. And there's more than a 12 percent chance leaders will order rolling blackouts in parts of the state. We're trying to put together a puzzle that kind of illuminates how this market could look for the next 5 to 10 to 15 years. Wednesday, the top brass at ERCOT and the Public Utilities Commission updated the Texas Senate, saying they are going through a complete overhaul of how the grid operates. In the next six to ten years, they'll need to double the amount of power they manage. We have the pieces out in front of us to build a market for the next 20 years, and I'm confident that you know, with the um, with the tools that we have and with the uh, with experience of the market that's going to contribute to it, we're going to get to that right picture. The main drivers of demand are new AI and tech data centers going online, oil facilities in the Permian Basin switching to electric power, and population growth. The most vulnerable time is over the next few years before all the state-run incentive programs deliver new power plants. And in the meantime, leaders are keeping an eye on price increases. The pendulum between the trade-off between cost and reliability, which can exist, uh, went really far to the side of reliability, almost at the expense, uh, at any expense. And I think it's time that, that we really consider cost. The new report did detail the grid has plenty of power if weather conditions this summer are, quote, normal. The summer season and high temperatures mean that you'll likely pay higher electric bills over the next few months, but you can lessen the blow. Seems air conditioning repairmen say that there are several ways to keep your AC unit from needing costly repairs, like doing maintenance twice a year. And it's also important to make sure that the drain lines are clear. Christopher Esparza was uh, with American AC and Heating says that there are issues that he sees often and that their company receives many calls for repairs. Air conditioning isn't so much the introduction of, of cool air as it is the removal of hot air. And if the box outside is not clean, then it cannot release that hot air efficiently. So then your bill goes up. Now, if your AC is broken, you might receive a costly bill, but Esparza says payment plans are available. 
All right, and you are getting a live look at the U.S. Capitol, where the House voted to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress. The vote means that House Speaker Mike Johnson can refer Garland to prosecution. And coming up in just a few minutes, our D.C. correspondent will join us live with more reaction from the Hill. And Texas passed laws to increase transparency in elections. They're supposed to prevent fraud, and in some circumstances, it can make it possible to discover how, how some people voted. Now, the House Elections Committee took a closer look at concerns about ballot secrecy. It comes after one of the state's top elections officials briefed senators last month about the issues. I think that the big transparency push really started around the 2020 election. Okay. And I would say that um, in the last two years, uh, we have seen this increase exponentially uh, to the point where counties are now proactively putting the information online rather than waiting for, for requests. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton released a legal ruling reiterating that governmental entities are legally required to redact identifying information on voters' ballots before it's released publicly. Now, both the Senate and the House Selection Committees will later create a report from these hearings to include their findings and possibly some policy recommendations for consideration in the upcoming season. And for the first time ever, Cameron County officials were forced to destroy election day ballots due to a misprint. These ballots were meant for the upcoming runoff elections set for this Saturday. And according to the Cameron County Elections Administrator, Remy Garza, officials received the ballots with initials on the back, which is appropriate during early voting, but not during election day itself. I had to ask them to reorder it, but when they reprinted them, they used the same serial numbers as the original order. And so now, instead of being able to use these ballots as early voting, we have to destroy them because we have duplicate serial numbers. Um, and this is a very rare thing. This is not something we've done before in Cameron County. All right. Garza says that they destroyed over 19,000 ballots, and fortunately they were able to do this before any of them got sent out for Election Day.